Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom Beta. My name is Swoop there and we are here in Fakola Mountain Park. Today's episode is an interesting one. I was feeling like I wanted to do something a little bit different for this episode. I've jumped straight into a speed build because it is slightly longer. It's about 15 minutes of speed build and then about five to ten minutes of me taking you around the desert house so I decided in this park that in order to have dinosaurs that roamed kind of in more desert like environments that I would need to build a habitat for them that was indoors and possibly climate controlled so I really wanted to put in the protoceratops it's my favorite dinosaur that is currently in game I really like building for the smaller dinosaurs and I decided that in order to put them in, I would need to build them an indoor enclosure because the biome that I've chosen to build this park in would be cold all year round, pretty much. Um, even though you sort of might get, you know, 19s or 20s every now and again, it's still never going to be uh, like a desert environment. So I thought I'll build a desert house and I'll just put the protoceratops in for now and then as I got building, I decided, no, no, I want to put in some smaller exhibits as well. So I built four smaller exhibits into this desert house also. I haven't actually decided what could, I guess, go in those exhibits. They are implied, um, but I thought I would leave that open to you guys as a community to decide what could go in them. There are four exhibits, two of them have water in them and sort of not enough for the animals to swim, but like, you know, if there was an animal that needed water in order to survive, I don't know, like a dragonfly, for example, um, then, you know, perhaps an animal, a prehistoric insect could go in there or something like that. And then there are two exhibits that do not have water. Um, there's one smaller and one larger with water and one smaller and one larger without, which you'll see during the building process and then in the real time part at the end. So I'm really open to suggestions. I haven't put anything on the exhibit signs. I've just kind of left the signs implied and then I will put uh, whatever creature you guys decide should go in them on them in a stream or in a later video. So whatever you think, it could be like the, one of the small winged dinosaurs. It could be a really small prehistoric mammal or a prehistoric insect. So whatever you guys think, um, go on and let me know and I will do that. So I'll just talk a little bit now about the protoceratops. Uh, I've talked about it in one of my other videos, so I'm not going to give you too much of their history. But I do want to talk about them a little bit because they are my favorite in-game currently. They were a herbivore from Mongolia originally, and the name comes from the Greek language proto meaning first and ceratops, which means horn face. So it basically means first horn face. And it looks like almost like a mini version of the triceratops, I suppose, with like it has that small, you know, that small distinctive frill that the triceratops have, um, although they're not entirely sure what that frill was used for so you know i guess scientists have speculated that it could have been used in combat or it could have been used as signs of dominance um, however they didn't have any prominent horns on their face so despite being called first horn face they actually don't necessarily have really prominent horns like for example the protoceratops did have but in terms of dinosaurs, these guys are small. So they're only about six feet long and two feet tall. And they weigh, I think, about up to about 180 kilograms from memory from what I read. I could be wrong there, um, but I'm pretty sure that's about right. They were a plant eater and the beak that they had on the front of their mouth was really only to help them um, chomp on the vegetation that they you know they were looking for they lived around about 75 to 71 million years ago and interestingly its uh, main predator was most likely the velociraptor and in fact a fossil of a velociraptor and a protoceratops actually in combat was discovered in 1971 in mongolia so the paleontologists that discovered it hypothesized that the dinosaurs that were discovered in that fossilized state were likely buried. They were either buried by a sandstorm or when a sand dune collapsed, 
um, or something like that because they were literally locked in a fight. So if I can find a picture of that, I will put that in for you now. I'm pretty sure I might have put it in my last Protoceratops video as well. So I'll put a link to that as well if you're keen to see that one. Uh, it's, it's also the first dinosaur eggs that were discovered are believed to be Protoceratops eggs. So each egg that they discovered was about eight inches long and newborn Protoceratops hatchlings are estimated to have been about a foot in length. So I find all this information about Protoceratops is really interesting because they are my current favourite dinosaur in game. I'm really looking forward to a lot more small creatures being added in game and I'm really hopeful that that will happen. Um, however, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. This is currently beta. We'll wait for early access. I'm really looking forward to everyone getting early access, by the way, and us being able to share our thoughts, feelings and ideas about the game. I'll talk a little bit now about my building process. So you can see I've gone away and added in like two, like three of the implied smaller exhibits and then I'm about to start filling them with rocks and branches and things like that. I've also tried to pay attention to most of the small details for this build. So I've got you know, the climate controlled vents in all of those pipes across the walls, both in the Protoceratops habitat and also in all of the small, um, all of those small exhibits that you can see me building at the moment. I've also made sure that in every single one of the small exhibits, there is a staff door. So the staff can actually get into the exhibits. I think usually they would probably have an airlock, but at the same time, in a lot of zoos that I've seen with these smaller exhibits, there is just a door and the staff kind of just have to be careful. This one here is the only one that actually opens to the outside. So when I finish building the building, there's a little area for the staff to walk around and it is outside. However, the other ones do have interior hidden doors that um, if an animal was to escape, it would only escape into the staff corridor and then they would have to work to kind of get it back through the door basically is the only thing they would have to do. They wouldn't have to try and chase it around the full building or they haven't accidentally released it into the wild. So I think I will go back and just this one that I'm building now, I'll add an airlock to, but the other ones I think will be fine. Let me know once again, what you think I should put into these habitats. You can see that this one's a little bit bigger and then I do make two smaller ones and then one other the same size as this. I use the glass here as implied water because the water's really tricky to work with in the sense that you can't sort of use the barriers like you can in other games to place it. You just have to kind of paint it onto wherever the land is and that wasn't going to work for me in this case so I tried to get a little bit creative and make it look like water just using the glass and I think it turned out quite well so we'll have a closer look at that in the real time part. Also I try to make all four of these exhibit habitats slightly different in style so some of them are a little bit more desert like some of them are a little bit more water like and I'm not sure why I did that I think just because I wanted some variety in the desert house but I did also call it a desert house so they're not all actually desert exhibits um, so just keep that in mind when you decide what um, dinosaurs or prehistoric creatures you think I should pop into these because they don't necessarily have to be from the desert this is the other water habitat I decided to do. I uh, popped in the glass again, as you would have seen me do, and you can see there that there are all those doors for the staff to actually enter these exhibits. What I'll do now is I will actually just leave you guys to enjoy the rest of the speed build. There is only about five minutes left, and then I will come back to you and show you around the desert house. See you then, guys.
Welcome back from the speed build everyone. Now here I have placed a I guess like a path cover to, going towards the desert house. I've also changed the path uh, I guess type right here. I have a few janky paths to show you now. So this way is the Pachyrhinosaurus habitat and then these stairs go up to the restaurant. Then we have these interesting paths up to the <laughs> entrance building. So I need to do some stair, some stairs for just here, I think, like continue on these stairs. And then this is the pathway that comes down from the Dinochiris habitat over this side. So let's head on down and have a look into the desert habitat or the desert house, I should say. So we'll just head on down and I'll stop outside for you to have a little bit of a look. So it does look very different to the rest of the park. So any other animals that I'm gonna sort of put that would have been from this particular habitat, I will put in this particular area of the park. So this is the entrance to the desert house, the main entrance, and you've got a ramp up this side so that everyone can access it equally. Then you've got just a couple of benches here because it did look a bit blank with nothing. There's like a little sculpture kind of, um, I guess, helping hold up this part of the roof. And we will head on in. Now I know that these trees here are not particularly realistic because regardless of this being a desert area in inverted commas, um, one, the palm trees are more tropical, but two, they wouldn't survive out here even if they were well looked after because there would regularly be snow and so on. So I'm thinking about taking them away and putting in something else that uh, is more suited for this biome which you guys can weigh in on if you like and then if we head on over you can see I've got I'm just going to exit out of this so that okay so that it's a little bit easier for you guys to see there we go so let's just head back a bit so you can see I've got some chairs and tables right here and then there's some signs and things on the doors so we'll head on through and I'll show you we'll head up the ramp here all right so you're entering a quiet zone you know please keep things calm and then the doors will open the glass doors here let's just turn around we get a view of all this area here all right and then we go on through the glass sliding doors and you're greeted with kind of this open interior now i'm just going to show you the roof first so you've got like this tiered roof system and some some glass skylights so that it really does let in the natural light in here so you know a lot of the plants that are in this planter would survive in here because it's all climate controlled and warmer then if you've got some bathrooms here you can head over here and you've got this smaller exhibit so all of these have also got all of the vents in them so that whatever you know temperature they need to be they could be this one's got implied water in it which was made with glass if you watch the speed build you would have seen me explain that and all of them also have staff doors which do all actually go somewhere like I really did make an effort for this particular building so that you know all the staff doors went somewhere it is not as detailed in the staff areas as the interior of the building so I'll show you the rest of this building first and then I'll show you the staff areas then if we sort of pan over here we've got the protoceratops habitat itself with these large skylights in the top and all the air vent systems in it so that they can control the climate in here as well i did put some water into this habitat just down here the reason i did that was because it's nice to have the drinking animation still in the game and there isn't kind of any water containers I suppose that we can put in for them yet so I wanted to do that you can see this one over here right in the back and then we've got these guys just hanging around I'll take you through the rest of the building first and then I'll show you the backstage area so I've got these implied signs there is another exit for the building over here so if you're coming through from that side you can just walk through then we have these two smaller exhibits on the right as you walk in they both have doors for the keepers to go in it's a shame that all the branches and things are still blowing in the breeze sort of in inside but that's something down the track that I'm sure they'll fix up as you can see I don't have any names of any of the implied prehistoric creatures that could be in these I'm leaving that up to you guys and then the other door for this one is over here and then we'll head through here there's another skylight above us here made with glass and then we'll turn around here and there's the other implied habitat here 
So, and this one's the same size as the one that I showed you first, but just looks a little bit different. This one doesn't have any water in it. So despite this being a smaller building, it did take a very long time to build. I think there was about four or five hours of footage that I cut down into the 15 minute speed build. It's obviously got some seats in here if you want to come in and sit down. It's got things for you to read about the dinosaurs and then you can get right up close to this glass and really get a good view of the Proto-Ceratops. So now let me take you through the staff areas. So this one here is really not, um, it's really not detailed at all. It was just to imply that if any creatures did get out, they really would only be in this staff kind of corridor. So here's the door here. And then if we turn around in here, you've also got the door for that one. I've got some rock poking through, but really I'm never going to have anyone sort of in here except the staff. And then you've got this one here and there is a door on the other side here for staff to enter and exit through. I just have to remember to put the door on the back there. So that one sort of goes all the way through to the other side. And then this one here actually goes into an outdoor walkway, which I was describing in the build so you can see this is the door to that particular little exhibit so that's why i was saying i do think i want to put an airlock on here because if they open that door then whatever could just fly out or walk out or run out into the world so i think i'll put an airlock on this but then this one is not um detailed really at all come down through here and you can see into the backstage of the protoceratops habitat so you've got the entry sort of doors for them the keeper entrance and then you've also got some of these holding pens for them and then if we head on down these stairs here you've got an outdoor holding pen and then we can go all the way around to the back here and then this is the entrance where you could potentially sort of back up a truck and bring them in. Obviously there's a lot of trees and things because I haven't gotten to the backstage area of this side of the park yet, but we can go in the keeper door here and then they would have this whole area. The protoceratops have this bit here to just kind of sleep in. And then you have these two holding pens as well. And then you have the roller door, implied roller door that comes up and down when they want to keep the protoceratops in. So let's head on into their little habitat now and we'll have a little look at the dinosaurs themselves. Let's have a look at this guy here. Such beautiful little dinosaurs. They're definitely my favorites so far. They're so cute. I really like this patterning that they have on their frills as well for this particular skin. I think it might be my favorite skin, although the green skin is really cool as well. This one here. Oh dear. Just bugging through each other a little bit. And we got this guy over here in the sun. And then you can see this is obviously where the guests would come to view them. So I hope they're not shy dinosaurs because they would definitely be getting looked at quite close up. And there we have it guys. That is what I got done today build wise. I am pretty happy with it. I'll take you out the exit door here and go out through here and I can show you this side of the building. So this is obviously going off to other parts of the park. I'm thinking about perhaps another desert habitat or building behind here. And then this is this side of the building itself. So there's still another quiet sign because someone might actually come through here rather than the other side. And then just here is going to be another garden bed in this side of the building. And there we go. I'll zoom up a little bit so you guys can see what the top of the building looks like. There we have it. And that, my friends, is the Desert House. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. If you are liking my content, please remember to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already, because it's really helpful, particularly for small creators on YouTube in January. January is not a fun time to be a content creator, unfortunately, but it should pick back up again in February. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.